Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting polynomial system. We have x squared plus y squared equals 61 and x cubed minus y cubed equals 91. I believe there is a Diophantine equation that just contains the second equation because if x and y are integers, we could just solve for two variables with one equation. So you might as well use that information if you already have it or you can just guess and check but that's not the goal you want to solve this algebraically and at the end I'm gonna show you something interesting okay so let's go ahead and start by factoring this difference of two cubes remember x cubed minus y cubed can be factored as x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared and you can actually come up with this formula by cubing x minus y and then putting the terms that contain x minus y on the same side and then factoring will give you the result. Okay, that's how it's kind of derived. So what, what do I know about this? I do know that this is equal to 91. Great. Do I know what x minus y is? No. Do I know the second factor? No. But let's go ahead and work with the first equation. That's why we kind of need to dig a little deeper. The first equation is the sum of two squares. How could I transform that into something helpful? Well, looking at the second equation, the cubic one, I think I'm going to need two things. X minus 1 is going to be helpful. And then another thing that is helpful will be the product, x, y. It's not very clear right now, but you'll see in a little bit how that's useful. So let's go ahead and do the following. x squared plus y squared can be written as x minus y squared because that gives you x squared plus y squared minus 2xy plus 2xy. Makes sense? And this is equal to 61. Awesome. So we got something in terms of x minus y and xy. In the other equation, which is the cubic one, we got x minus y, xy, and x squared plus y squared. So I kind of need to get rid of this. But wait a minute. I already know what it is. I can just plug it in, right? Wait. Is x squared plus y squared 61? Yes, it is. So let's go ahead and substitute 61 here because I already know it, right? So that gives us something different. Let's go ahead and rewrite our equations. x minus y multiplied by 61 plus xy equals 91. And the second equation says x minus y squared plus 2xy equals 61. Great, so these two equations are going to help us solve for x and y. And how do we go about solving it? We achieved our goal, actually, because we ended up with two variables. Notice that by using some identities, by using a little bit of algebra, we were able to turn this into a system of equations with two variables. What are those variables? Those variables are x minus y and xy. If we can find those, we can find x and y, hopefully, right? So let's go ahead and call this something. How about calling the x difference d and calling the product p? That makes sense, doesn't it? So now let's rewrite our equations under those conditions. d times 61 plus p equals 91. And then d squared plus 2p, or not, okay, that didn't work. Sorry about that, equals 61. I should have chosen b for that one, not p. Anyways, just you, you kind of flip it and you'll get a B, right? Anyway, so this is my system. What am I going to do with this, right? Well, I could probably do the following. Distribute the first one. That's going to give me 61D plus DP. Let's not use PD. You could also use PD. No big deal. Equals 91. And now what can I do with the second equation? So I got the first one. From the second equation, I can act actually isolate P right? I don't, I don't want to isolate D because I don't want to deal with square roots. That would be a little ugly, right? So let's go ahead and isolate P here. That's going to be 61 minus D squared divided by 2. And this is awesome because I can plug it in here. I only have one occurrence of P and that will be easy. Now let's go ahead and replace P with 61 minus D squared all over 2. So let's go ahead and substitute 61d plus d times 61 minus d squared over 2 equals 91. So this is the equation we need to solve. Let's go ahead and solve it. First of all, you can go ahead and multiply both sides by 2. That's going to give you 
122d plus d times 61, which you can write as 61d minus d cubed. We already got rid of the 2 there. Equals 182. Awesome. Now, when you add the 122d and 61d, you're going to get 183d. Let's go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side where d cubed is positive. That's going to give us d cubed minus, notice that that's going to become positive, 183d plus 182 equals 0. No way. You know this, right? Look at the sum of the coefficients. It's 0. 1 minus 183 plus 182 is equal to 0. Awesome. You know what that means? It means d equals 1 is a solution. Let's go ahead and use it to find p. p is given by 61 minus d squared divided by 2. So 61 minus 1 is 60 divided by 2 is 30. So we now know the difference of these two numbers and their product. Can we find the numbers? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and back substitute. What does D mean? D means X minus Y and P means X times Y. How do you solve this? You could probably guess and check and there's going to be two pairs, but let's go ahead and do it algebraically again. I know you already guessed it, but I can go ahead and replace Y with X minus 1. I could also do X equals Y plus 1, but I like the X better than the Y. I don't know why, but it just looks better. Replace now y with x minus 1. x times x minus 1 equals 30. Again, at this point, you could guess and check because you're talking about the product of two consecutive numbers, uh, you know, whose product is 30, so on and so forth. But anyways, let's still do it algebraically. Brute force, okay. So from here now, we can factor it. I think we can use factoring. We deserve it, right? x minus 6 times x plus 5 equals 0. And then from here, we get two solutions, x equals 6 and x equals negative 5. Awesome. We got two solutions. How do you find the y values? Remember, y is 1 less than x. So if x is equal to 6, y is going to be 5. If x is negative 5, y is going to be negative 6. Notice that the product of these numbers is 30 and y is always 1 less. Of course, they're not symmetrical. x isn't always greater than y. In this case, y is greater. Okay, that makes sense? Great. So, what do you do with this information, right? Those are the solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at some. Oh, by the way, we only found one solution from here. So let's explore a little bit further. I know uh, we're going to stop probably uh, when we check the next thing. But, you know, d equals 1 is not the only solution because this is cubic. So let's go ahead and do the following. I'm going to go ahead and leave the solutions alone. So I'm going to erase this part only. Let's go ahead and do our work here. And here, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the other solutions. So we got d cubed minus 183d, right? So what are the other solutions? How do you find them? You can basically write, do the following. You can kind of subtract a d from here and then follow by 182d plus 182. And a kind of factor by grouping. d times d squared minus 1, which is d plus 1 times d minus 1, minus 182 times d minus 1, and now d minus 1 is a common factor, of course, because we know d equals 1 is a solution, and then this will be followed by d squared plus d minus 182, and yay, there are real solutions. How do I know that right away without checking? Because if a and c in a quadratic equation are opposite signs, then the discriminant is always greater than 0. But if you find the other solutions, you're going to find something like this, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, plus, because negative 4ac, that's going to be 728. Uh-oh, this is interesting, because you know what? 100, uh, okay, 729 is 27 squared. Awesome. So this can be written as negative 1 plus minus 27 divided by 2. And if you... Go with the plus sign, you're going to get d equals 13. And if you go with the minus sign, you're going to get negative 14. Along with p, of course, p is not going to be 30 in this case. You kind of have to consult the formula. p equals 6 to 1 minus d squared. p equals 6 to 1 minus d squared over 30. Was that 30? No, it wasn't 30. It was 2. Yeah. 30 was after division. We got 30. Now, if you plug in 13, you're going to get... 169, and if you subtract it, 
169 minus 61 is going to be 108, but it's going to be negative, negative 54. So P is going to be negative 54 from here. With the D equals negative 14, the product is going to be 61 minus 196, and 196 minus 61 is going to be 135, but it's going to be negative 135. And that's going to be divided by 2, of course. That's going to be a fraction. Not good, not good. Okay. Anyways, you get the idea. We've got other pairs. Let's look at the first one because the first one kind of looks manageable. Uh, do you think we can find two numbers whose product is negative 54 and whose difference is 13? You can test some integers like, for example, I can think of 27 and 2, but their difference is not going to get close. I could probably use 9 and 6 or 18 and 3. Probably we're not going to find anything nice, but let's go ahead and write it as a quadratic equation. Uh, X minus Y is 13. Let's replace X with Y plus 13. And then the product is just going to be X times Y or Y times Y plus 13. That's equal to negative 54. And from here, Y squared plus 13Y plus 54 equals 0. And from here, if you try to find the Y value, you're going to get negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4ac, uh-oh, we're going to get some complex solutions from here. And probably the second one is also going to give you complex solutions. Anyways, you can go out and explore those on your own because I'm going to show you the next big thing. And ta-da, that is the graph. Like, what is the big deal about this graph, right? Take a look at it. One of them is a circle. What about the other one? Does that look like an elliptic curve? I think so. Anyways, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.